All right, we've got our first time tips video in a couple of months here. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these, but I had a question a while back, maybe not a while back, you know, a couple days ago, um, asking me to do a video on whip finishing by hand, uh, but to slow down and actually explain it. You know, when I'm tying in the videos, I just go and it's done. I never really explain what I'm doing or how I whip finish by hand. Um, so we're going to do that, we're going to touch on that, and we'll also touch on using one of the tools. I mean, you guys figure we may as well just hit on everything here. You guys have seen me use the tools on like a lot of the nymphs and the dry flies and stuff like that. I'm a little more accurate with this, and I'll explain this, the reasons why I use the tool sometimes over whip finishing by hand. But when I first started, um, when I first started tying, you know, years back, all I did, all I, this is what I learned with. I learned with the tool. Uh, my cousin Darren taught me, and at first, it, it was uh, it was the most uncoordinated thing. It was the most unnatural thing that I've ever done. I felt like I was trying to pedal a bicycle backwards. It just was. It did not work. So, what I would do is I would just tie my thread on a hook, on a bare hook, and I would just practice and practice and practice because. What would happen is I'd go through and I'd tie a fly and all the materials would be on there. It wouldn't be a pretty fly, but it would be on there. And then I would go to whip finish and the materials would fall off. And, you know, I'd get frustrated, cuss, throw stuff across the room, throw a little temper tantrum, whatever it may be. But this is what I did. This is how I finally learned how to do it. I would just sit there and whip finish and whip finish for it seemed like hours you know until I finally got comfortable with it and then you don't even have to think about it so we're gonna go ahead I, I have just a regular uh, 2x streamer hook in here but we're gonna go ahead and talk through this just a little bit on how I whip finish by hand and then we'll go into the reasons why and when I'll use the tool so to start on this give yourself a generous amount and you're gonna hold me get zoomed out here a little bit you're gonna hold your material or your bobbin with your left hand if, if you're a right-handed tire you know opposite obviously if you're uh, a left-handed tire and what I do is I take my two fingers right on my thread hold this in my left and I control the thread right here with this finger so no matter how much pressure I put on this because I'm, I'm pushing on this thread with my pinky, I can put as much tension on there as I want. You'll see if I take my pinky off, it can slide, and I'm winding up getting more thread out, which I don't want. So between my pinky and the palm of my hand holding this, holding the spool in place, I can put all the pressure on there that I want. Okay? So then I'll move this off to the side. So almost in line with my vise right here and then I rotate my fingers just one time around so rotate your fingers right like that and you'll see we have this X right here okay so your middle finger is on the top as you're looking at it as the tire and then you bring your fingers one time around your middle finger is now the lead and you're just going right around and every time you come around, you're rotating your fingers, you're grabbing the lead thread, and you're tucking it under the eye and bringing, th bringing this around. So right here, see where my middle finger is up top? I tuck this so that wire, or that thread stays underneath, and I make one loop around. Tuck it, make a loop around, pinch it with my finger and my thumb and there we go you you have a good secure knot we'll go through that one more time and I won't even I won't talk on this one I'll just give you I'll zoom in as much as I can and that way you can just see my fingers working on this one how we do this There you have that. This, that's how I whip finish by hand. 
Um, you'll see that I use this a lot on my streamer, on all of the streamers that I tie. Uh, even the deer hair heads, you know, where they're untrimmed, and you know, like the D&Ds, the dungeons, whatever. I can peel all of this back, control the bobbin with my fingers, and then just go through and whip finish, and it's done real quick. But that's after a lot, of, a lot of practice and a lot of, you know, a lot of time. If you're uncomfortable whatsoever, um, and or if you find you're trapping a lot of deer hair, you can take like a plastic bag or a piece of a straw or whatever, and throw it over the top so you're not going to trap any material. We'll get this one out of the vise and we'll go into a. This is a curved caddis hook. It has the down eye on it. These, for me, are still tricky. Not so much when you know you're you've got a bear hook. When you got a bear hook, it's not really all that tricky. But if you have materials in there and you're trying not to trap materials, it gets a little more difficult to whip finish by hand. So you can still do it this way. But see, I'm not worried about trapping materials. So you can still do it. What you can do is you can peel all your materials back, keep everything like this, and because you have to come at an angle, you can't go just straight up and down on this because it'll catch. You come at an angle, put your finger over the top to keep your thread from sliding, and right there. This though is normally where I will go with the whip finisher. Like I said, I just have a little bit more control. Things are a little bit easier for me to pinpoint exactly where my thread's going to be just because I've used this for so long. And it's the same concept. So you start here, and I didn't really explain that too awful well. So go ahead and grab your thread. Same thing, I hold, with this I control the thread by my fingers right here. I don't have to spool it, I don't have to, you know, use my pinky in the back. I just take the amount of thread out that I want and I control it right here so everything is in these fingers. You can see, I mean, I can pull and do whatever I want. I can have the thread go where I want without getting extra. So you'll just go ahead and clip, you'll go ahead and grab this right with the point, okay? Here's the point of your whip finisher right up top. Go ahead and just loop that in, and then you'll catch this right on this depression right here on the underside. You can see right where that thread is supposed to go. So you go ahead and clip this in here. And then what I always do is I bring my bobbin up above me. So that way I have this stuff locked in and I'm holding on this little swivel right here for my X and at this point you can let go of the swivel and then you're just going right around your hook. Push it up and come through. So hold on to the swivel, hook it, bring your thread up and then bring this it's just one quick rotation right around. Make your X, put your X right where you want it. One, two, three. Push it up and pull that through. There it is. That's it. When, when, when my cousin Darren taught me how to do this at first, I watched him do it, and he had been tying for, you know, a, a, a while longer um, at this point when, when I first started tying, and he did it, and it just went real quick, and I was like, man, that looks easy as could be, you know, I mean, I, it's not bad, next thing you know, my arms all up like this, and things are just everywhere, and I'm, <laughs> can't, I, I, I could not grasp it for the longest time. So just a ton of repetition, a ton of repetition before I actually got to completing flies with it. Um, another thing that helped me a lot, even after I started getting comfortable, and I will still do this from time to time now. Um, let me just go ahead and get another quick thread base down here. A 
lot of times if I'm feeling uncomfortable or if I think the thread's going to slip on me because maybe I rushed the head a little bit or whatever it may be, I'll take and I'll do a quick half hitch uh, just to ensure that my thread isn't going isn't gonna to slip. So I'll take and half hitch and basically all this is is you're just bringing your thread around, you're making uh, a granny knot basically now your thread's not going to walk up and down on you so if it if you're just doing this and you find that it's slipping off a lot just do a quick half hitch so all you're going to do is <laughs> as i'm watching myself on the monitor um i'm fumbling all over the place with this i'm watching the monitor not my hands so you can see all this is is just a quick loop see how that loop will slide Just a quick loop. The thread is coming around itself. So here's the thread and it comes around itself. Hopefully that's showing up on camera and making sense. And then I grab everything. I will, I will hold down the thread with my forefinger or with my, with my finger so it doesn't travel on me. And then I let go of the loop and just pull back with your bobbin. And then you're free to whip finish. Throw this on here, I'm watching the monitor again, and just one, two, three, boom, there it is, and it's done. Um, hopefully, this this translates all right because you're watching it opposite of how you would see it when you're at the bench. So hopefully, it hopefully everything turns out all right. I wanted to get a camera set either right behind me over my shoulder looking down or you know maybe having my phone right here and doing the video that way but i just couldn't get it how i wanted it and the, the, the picture just wasn't right so hopefully this works out and hopefully it makes sense when i'm talking through it to the viewer but um as always if you guys have any questions comments leave them with me and i'll get back to you but thanks again for watching and we'll catch you on the next live